All right. Good evening, Professor Sandhya Tilakaratna. Thank you very much for coming to my channel today. And I'm especially glad that you're here because I consider you, many of us consider you as one of the foremost writers of Buddhism in Sri Lanka. And you have dealt with various aspects of it including Buddhism and modernity and you know it is historical development and I was um, the, the, the current contribution that you have made to Sri Lankan literature you have the whole volume oh my three volumes in single and five volumes in English which is a collected series of all your work it's enormously impressive and I will be discussing these books later in one of the Debasa programs, but because I think my videos are going way beyond time now, and I'm separating the discussion with you into two. And I will start by asking you to speak about how you learned English. And also, sometimes we feel that particular subjects don't necessarily call for the knowledge of English. For example, I have come across opinions which say if you're studying Sinhala or maybe mm -hmm. Buddhism, what is the use of knowing English? I mean, is it essential, right? We'll get to that point later, Professor. No, let's start there. If mm -hmm. we are like, for example, Buddhism, if you know Sanskrit and Pali, right? Why, why what, what need is there? for us to learn English if you are a researcher in it. And you, I think, is the best person able to answer that because you have written extensively in English. You have presented papers all around the world and you have carried the message of what Sri Lankan Buddhism is, perhaps the best um, representative we have at the moment. Could I ask you, Professor, to start with, I know you're Professor Emeritus now, but a very quick sketch of uh, your academic career, and then we'll go to the question of why you think English is important, or whether you think English is important when you're researching about an Eastern religion like Buddhism. We'll start with uh, telling the audience who you are, sir. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Madhubashini, uh, uh, for inviting me um, for this uh, forum. Um, as you know, um, I mean, um, getting an occasion to talk about yourself is always, <laughs> you know, uh, gratifying. And thank you um, for your very kind um, introduction. Uh, yes, uh, as you mentioned, my uh, academic field, my field of uh, uh, studies is uh, Buddhism or Buddhist studies. Uh, in fact, uh, Madhubhashini, uh, with Buddhist studies, I have, I would say, uh, quite uh, long affair, <laughs> uh, in the sense uh, uh, I, uh, of course, started as uh, anyone else, you know, going to my um, uh, village school in uh, Tissamaharama, uh, that was in uh, 19, like, uh, 60s, and then, uh, uh, I did not have um, uh, much of a English uh, education there, uh, but then uh, I moved to Colombo, and then uh, my uh, life in Colombo started as a monastic life. So I had a monastic background, and that is uh, when I uh, received my education. So that education uh, from the from that beginning was uh, Buddhist. So um, in that sense, uh, that is why I said I had a long affair with uh, Buddhist studies. Right. And, so you studied uh, at Piriven? Uh, actually, it is not a Piriven. I studied at uh, Maharagama uh, Siri Vajrayana Dharma uh, Of course, it is a training college for Buddhist monks, but uh, it is not considered a Piriven because okay. it is not registered uh, with, uh, or it does not come, um, you know, under the uh, Piriven education, but of course it has its own um, education system. And then uh, I started from there and then I entered uh, uh, 
that is 1969, uh, uh, Buddha Shravaka Dharma Today it is um, Anuradhapura Bhikshu University today, but it was started uh, as Buddha Shravaka Dharma I belong to the uh, very first uh, batch of uh, students. Uh, that was again uh, monastic education center. It still continues as a monastic education um, center or university. So that is where I got my, I would say, first degree, uh, which was called uh, Tripitaka Vedi. And then along with that, I uh, studied for Prachina, Praramba, Madhyam and Navasana, uh, which means that I passed those examinations in Singhala, Pali and Sanskrit. So that, that was basically language studies. Then subsequently, I um, uh, got enrolled in Peradeni University and I studied uh, Buddhist uh, philosophy special degree. But I uh, did that study as an external student. Actually, um, to um, say a little bit about my um, like, you know, boast about me. Uh, when I was, uh, uh, I, I sat uh, GAQ, uh, I became the island first uh, in Peralinia examination and they offered me uh, to be an internal student, but then I ca calculated I was by that time almost, uh, uh, almost getting a little bit uh, older in the sense late twenties. I thought um, if I became an internal student, it would take another three years. But if I continued as an external student, I would have done the examination next year within a year. So uh, Madhubhash and I took a fairly big risk because you know, if I went into university as an internal student, uh, I, 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 I could have known the, uh, the you know, professors and you know, getting a first-hand experience. But um, I, I, uh, I opted to, I thank them for the offer. But then I opted uh, to sit for the final examination. And uh, somehow or other, I uh, secured the first class as an uh, external student. Uh, so that is how my uh, academic, uh, you know, the studies started. And then only after one year or so, I, I got this uh, East West Center Fulbright Fellowship and moved to uh, United States for my um, uh, postgraduate studies. But uh, uh, the, the my how I um, uh, did uh, fairly well in my first uh, BA honors examination was di uh, directly had to do something with my being able to uh, um, read and write in English yes. because so before, uh, before we yeah. before we come there, sir. Once mm -hmm. you when you went to the USA, uh, just give us a very brief introduction of where you ended up academically. Yeah, um, then I, um, I got this uh, scholarship and I spent um, uh, almost seven years in the University of Hawaii completing my uh, master's in Western philosophy because I thought that because I have Buddhist philosophy from this side, so I thought, and then I did my um, PhD in what is called uh, comparative philosophy, so combining Buddhist uh, Western uh, and Hindu and also uh, East Asian philosophies. So that is in, uh, uh, you know, the comparative philosophy. And in then- uh, In which university did you get your PhD? Uh, university of Hawaii. Ah, same, same place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah both uh, MA and PhD are received from the same university. Okay. okay. And then I came and I joined uh, Postgraduate Institute of Pali and Buddhist Studies belonging to the University of Kalania. Yeah. By that time, the director was Professor uh, Y. Karunadas. So, um, uh, so he recruited me. So I started my teaching career there uh, till I was there till I joined um, Columbia University later in you know, about 10 years back. Uh, then there I worked till my retirement as a, a senior professor of uh, Pali and Buddhist Studies. So this is basically, and right now at the moment, I'm supposed to be the editor-in-chief of Encyclopedia of Buddhism. 
sir, in Colombo, the, the Buddhist studies is a department or just a unit, sir? Yeah, in fact, when I joined, it was, uh, it was uh, we had a unit, but then the uh, unit was, um, we worked hard and, you know, finally we uh, got a department for uh, Buddhist studies. So currently, there is a department for Buddhist studies in the uh, University of Colombo. Okay, right, sir. So since your retirement, you have been working in the Buddhist Encyclopedia as the yeah. main editor, chief editor? Yes. Uh, Encyclopedia project is, uh, in a sense, uh, already complete, but uh, they need um, um, index volume. So actually, we are complete in that. But at the same time, I feel that um, uh, you know, Encyclopedia project has been in the country starting from 1956. So, you know, it's, it's a long project, uh, eight volumes. And I see that uh, there are certain, um, you know, some new knowledge which needs to be incorporated into it. And also some entries uh, that were not included. So, and also there is a need to um, put the encyclopedia, make it available in the web. So, you know, there are the few things uh, left. So we, we think that we should be... Yeah. Side, side tracking a little bit. So when you say Buddhist yeah. encyclopedia, you cover Buddhism as a whole and particularly what is applicable to Sri Lanka, is it? No, no, no. Actually, it is It is in, in a real sense, uh, it is an encyclopedia in the sense we cover uh, virtually everything related to Buddhism, everything related to Buddhism. Now, uh, I should mention here uh, the 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 starting the original editor-in-chief was uh, the late Professor G.P. Malasekar, Gunapala Malasekar. And um, you know, he had, a, he seems to have had a great vision and he combined the entire world. Uh, he physically went into um, uh, East Asian countries like China, Japan, Korea, uh, met personally the Buddhist scholars in those countries. So uh, as a result of his vision, this encyclopedia of Buddhism is really encyclopedia of Buddhism, not Sri Lankan Buddhism. So in that sense, you have Mahayana, Vajrayana, Theravada. But uh, be, being uh, in, in Sri Lanka, you know, being a project in Sri Lanka, of course, it does have, uh, you know, orientation towards uh, also emphasis on Theravada and uh, some Sri Lankan aspect. But as a work, it is an encyclopedia. Right. And it's in Sinhala, sir? Uh, no, it is in English. It's in English. Will it also be available in Sinhala? Because I would well, say that, that there is a need for it as uh, well. The... Right. That is another project we are thinking at the moment. To right. translate in, into English, but again, uh, Madhubashini, the Sinhala. issue is like when you trying to translate into English, uh, some entries need, seem to be needing uh, some kind of, you know, the, some revision, some addition, and also because two alphabets are different. Uh, now, uh, you know, in in a single translation, uh, you can't really translate. Uh, volume by volume, because you have to really arrange it according to the single alphabet. So I, that, I would say it's a completely different project. No, it can't be that, translation, that's, that's especially right. not, not, not encyclopedias. So it's available in English, sir. How many volumes are there? At the uh, altogether eight volumes. So with the, hopefully we will be completing the index volume this year. So it will uh, be completed with altogether nine volumes. Right. So you are still very much active in this, um, process of getting knowledge across. Yeah. Sir, I also know your, you have your own foundation. Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, I, I, along with, you know, a couple of other professionals, we started almost 20 years back uh, the foundation called Damrivi Foundation. Now, Damrivi Foundation is basically a Buddhist, uh, I would say, social organization for educational, social and spiritual development. And uh, the philosophy behind the organization is um, because there are in Sri Lanka, as you know, there are uh, so many Buddhist uh, social organizations. So our reason for starting another organization was basically we thought that uh, we should try to um, uh, try to make use of the philosophy or the teachings of Buddhism 
for um, you know in order to help society for example you know developing attitude of the young people and then also we have developed um, uh, the the, uh, the counseling uh, project for counseling with buddhist inputs things like that so our basic emphasis is on uh, using buddhist philosophical insights and the buddhist, using buddhist uh, teaching uh, to help society so uh, foundation um, runs like um, dhamma discussions psychological buddhist psychological discussions meditation programs and you know things like that of course we also do the, you know the material social service but that is not our focus really okay and these programs are in sinhala english sir uh, in both languages in both languages yeah that's All right. right so now i'm going to backtrack to see how you learned english so where where is your village you said in anuradhapur uh, is is this maharama it is maharama yes. what was your exposure to english like there sir did you have any input or was it absolutely zero mm-hmm. and uh, actually it is almost near zero um, in village uh, the school i went is um, debrewa now it is of course fairly well known school but uh, early 1960s it was fairly uh, a, a small school uh, we did have uh, you know the decent education but then i left and you know i uh, entered into the monkhood and then my uh, education was uh, basically monastic now in that uh, monastic education particularly at uh, uh, maharagam sri vajrayana dharmayatane there was a difference because that particular education system envisaged by uh, the late most venerable mandhi panyasi mahanayaka thera Uh, he had this vision that uh, the, the buddhism has to be taken to the world and also you know the his uh, whoever studied there should also have uh, good uh, not only pali sanskrit and sinhala but also good uh, english education uh, it is interesting in regular pirivena education uh, usually there are two uh, subjects that you will not really get punished for not attending this those are you english and mathematics so usually in the traditional pirivenas of course uh, i am not saying that it is uh, the same still but usually english and mathematics are not very much really laid emphasis on but then here the it was very different and also we we had a we had a you know the very uh, good particularly a very good teacher one mr jayasena and he had his own um, uh, method of uh, teaching grammar so by the time i joined uh, from maharagama i joined uh, uddasravaka big university i was among the youngest in that group i was actually just uh, 17 years old but by that time uh, uh, i could uh, uh, i mean i had a fairly solid uh, grammatical background and then i could um, read newspapers and you know very uh, simple books in english so that was my my background and then uh, interesting thing is when i went into uh, anuradhapur uh, joined buddha shravaka university it was the still the Uh, Buddha Shrav University was uh, situated in um, sacred uh, city Pujaniya Nagare, uh, very close to Ruan Melisa and Sri Ma Bhogdiye. Just adjoining uh, our small university was the Anuradhapur Public Library. Uh, Madhubhashini, um, I think Anuradhapur Public Library, as I heard later, is one of the very good, very you know the one of the very good very rich uh, in its collection uh, libraries in our country and it had i still remember it had one book on uh, anuradhapur um, uh, archaeology uh, huge book uh, of a size of a pay, newspaper and uh, i still remember it was printed in 1852 i, I i'm sure it is a relic Uh, if the still uh, the book is available in the library so anyway the story is this so it was um, uh, just adjoining 
so we would just uh, jump over the wall and go to the the, the not really jump but you know we just <laughs> uh, joining so uh, went to um, went to the library i got a membership because i did not want to i mean did not feel going all by myself i got another friend of mine to join so we had uh, uh, two cards for me and two cards for my friend but my friend would not read much so ultimately i end up borrowing all four books and then uh, of course this is a common experience of all the university students you go to library and then here the under the public library you see about uh, 25% of the singular books and the rest of the 75% books are in english so the moment you see this you know you start feeling really bad about you because you know you think that how do you get this knowledge how do you get access to this knowledge and not only you know these books are not only um, um academic books and i could see that there are novels with nice covers and all that so you know you you feel the urge to read them uh, but then uh, you don't have the language right so what happened was i i started borrowing so you could uh, i think we could uh, keep a book for two weeks so i used to borrow four books per every two weeks and then was trying to struggle in to read so this is how it really um, started really <laughs> how did you how did you manage the books sir? were you looking at live dictionaries because at that time there couldn't have been the internet where it was very simple no 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 so how, how what was your struggle like when you i'm sure you did not have children's books that you wouldn't have borrowed them so you no. started with pretty serious books how did your did your was your grammar knowledge enough for you to handle them or but uh, what was the process mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah actually the the i i, I would say that i had a fairly uh, fairly good grammatical knowledge but that does not mean that i could understand all the uh, structures of the sentences uh, um, let me tell you how it really uh, got into now of course i was in the in the public library i was uh, just picking up whatever the book uh, that was with uh, more conversations right so that was the criterion and it is very interesting uh, i finally end up reading something like 15 to 20 uh, uh, books by uh, J. Krishnamurti. And it happened as a totally as an accident because I was just browsing through the books and did not know who, who the author was. And I browsed, when I was browsing uh, through the library, I found that um, talks of J. Krishnamurti in Europe. So that was the series name, very nicely printed. And uh, the most important thing was they were full of dialogues. So you don't find uh, huge thick uh, paragraphs. So I just picked up some of those things, not knowing that I was reading this, you know, great thinker and philosopher. <laughs> right? That so, was very uh, serendipitous. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. And then, so that is how I, uh, so I, and then uh, as you know, Krishnamurti's writings are so deceptively simple. I mean, they are extremely simple, right? And then, uh, uh, but uh, it only so that's, takes- That's fantastic advice, sir, because I always <laughs> want to find out what is simply written, but is not childish in thought. So <laughs> now after your conversation, I can probably talk about <laughs> Krishnamurti as well to find, uh, find his work. It's, it's, it's really, really interesting because uh, very deep thoughts are coming in such a, extremely simple language and very anyway so that is uh, that, that is one, yeah, one i one. have a i have a question if yeah. you were to go to a public library now mm -hmm. is it the case that the majority of books will be in english sir i have a feeling it won't be actually i don't know what the current situation is when the andhra library was moved out of uh, sacred city by that time of course we had left andhra i have not been to the new library i know it is in the new town uh, so uh, but in andhra it was it was very different because andhra was a, a very cosmopolitan city those days i still remember even the biggest person in that 1960s that area was the disapathy GA. And then we could see that Disapati himself coming with a couple of books and returning books and, you know, uh, sitting in the line of uh, two, two. I mean, we had a different Sri Lanka those days, you know, today big people, or even the so-called small or big people don't observe lines, right? 
they just think that you know they have a right to go right away but i still remember this disapati this gie i don't remember his name i mean he was just in the line you know with other people to return his books and borrow books so in anuradhapura library was a center where all the government servants and all these people you know in that society came kind of intellectual hub so you know uh, that that question that question now is not even lines the question is whether they read <laughs> exactly. so if they were exactly. reading sir exactly. they'll be standing in line so it's it's a different yeah. question altogether so i guess it it's a different world that you speak about because i think Correct. i'm a father's generation like i was born in 69 yeah, I, I, time you really really so, yeah. so that the, the the past that you speak of with books and you know i'm not saying i'm not trying to romanticize it but books and discipline yeah. played quite a big role in uh, in the okay. way you you grew up especially the 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 value of reading which i think mm-hmm. you might have lost along the way right sir yeah. so you struggled but, uh, let, let let me add to one 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 another point to it because uh, now in budasravaka dharma pite of course our teachers were it was very traditional we had very venerable uh, uh, elderly monks as our teachers but then i i kind of you know in in, in my own uh, you know the young age i realized that uh, i get to um, learn the languages and then of course we did have uh, english teachers but then uh, uh, i really wanted to start reading buddhist philosophy in english and then uh, I, then i borrowed i still remember i uh, i borrowed this uh, book by k n jayatilaka early buddhist theory of knowledge now madhubhasini this is a huge book about almost 500 page book and then his phd dissertation and still considered to be a classic in now field and then i was i knew that i was extremely way too ambitious to start reading this nobody asked me to but what i did was i had my malasekara dictionary and then i i borrowed this uh, actually i did not borrow i had my own copy i think yes because i had my own copy so what i did was uh i thought that i mean i had to do some kind of sacrifice because uh, i was not very well known for get, getting very early in the morning but then i thought that i should get very early in the morning because i had to find some time so what i did was um, i got up like uh, just around 4 o'clock in the morning and then our university was such a small place and we could i mean enter into the library uh, because you know the library was kind of you know open for because we were very uh, few students so i would go to library and sit down there and with my malasekara dictionary and the kn jayatilaka's uh, the, the 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 early buddhist theory of knowledge i still remember what i did was i just read first um, uh just marking the words which i did not understand right and then i go to the dictionary and take a piece of paper and mark down the meaning of all those words and then i keep the meanings and i look at it again and i try to read you know this process i still remember when the very first pages like i had about i counted 50 Sixty words I did not know, so I marked down all those things, wrote down in a piece of paper, and the, the wrote the meaning in Sinhala. You know, I I, I did just, this. I want, okay, I yes. did this, and then as a, as an English teacher, <laughs> sir, I want then, to I want to signal the fact that people now try to take the easy way out. but what you just said uh, there is no know, easy way there is no yeah. easy way <laughs> you actually wrote down 50 words and you did thing and and the point is this sir that kind of exercise you ended up getting a phd in in a western country writing in english yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah, what yeah. Prof, like professor amarkeetty also said there's a lot of hard work but yeah. it the, the end result is that your english should become so proficient that you can write a thesis not that anyone is perfect mm-hmm. but you can so I, yeah. i i just like to signal that flag that you know mm-hmm. that you actually mm-hmm. sat with a book yeah. struggled with 50 words not knowing i mean anyone else would give up Ex- exactly you didn't and then interesting thing is you know lo and behold like when i reached about 
page 100, that number had reduced to maybe 15 to or something. And then when you when I reached about 200, 300, finally it was like five to six words per page. And still there are words I don't know. I still refer to dictionary. Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But another story I want to tell you is, so, you know, I used to uh, so the, you know have this uh, Malasekra dictionary with me. So finally, it so happened that when I touched my Malasekra dictionary, I know whether the dictionary is in the right way or wrong way. To that extent, my hand was used to it. <laughs> You see, exactly. so um, yes. uh, yeah, exactly the point you said. If you don't do that hard work, people think that you know you can do this within one month. I really get into always laughter when I see that no. you know English taught within one month or something like that. The camps and all that. No, no. I, I think the whole point is like you really must be ready to do that. But my my my, uh, what I want to say is, if you do that without being lazy for maybe six months regularly, I think you are there. The challenging is if you don't know the grammar, then of course you have to know the grammar. I mean, know the structure. If you, I mean, having referred to all the words you don't know, maybe still you don't understand the sentence, which means that, you know, it, 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 you may need some help from a teacher or somebody. Yes. Because this can, be alone. Can I, can I ask you a question? How so, was the speaking, sir? While you were doing this, were you also practicing your speaking? Uh, actually, Nanuradhapura, we did not have. I mean, we, we were we were uh, talking among ourselves. But then I had again uh, fairly uh, fortunate uh, situation because. Uh, my monastic center, although I studied in uh, Maharagama, was in Ratmalana, Ratmalana Malikarame, which is a kind of urban area. And then I had some, uh, I mean, in that area, they are government servants and, you know, sort of middle class families. And then I had a, a group of elderly, um, um, you know, the educated people. Uh, so they used to come to me. And then we sit together and every week we used to have a discussion uh, on Dhamma. But of course, uh, only gradually I realized that it was not the purpose that they learned Dhamma from me. They were so <laughs> good to help me in English, actually. <laughs> that, but that, anyhow, yes, that's so, an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. So just before we so leave, that, the, leave the dictionary yeah. thing, in our generation, yeah. so perhaps even younger than me, I'm, I'm quite old as well. We tend to look at the phone and there are dictionaries there. But I, your generation, like yeah. my father, I mean, though he is also Professor Emeritus, even now, so there are about three, four dictionaries open on his table when he writes something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that, you know, you never stop learning. It's a never ending process. Yeah, yeah. And you never say, I, I know everything. So... Yeah, definitely. And not only that, I'm very, I mean, my old, I always feel that if I have even a smallest doubt, I mean, I don't feel like using that word. So then gradually, of course, I moved into like Oxford Concise Dictionary and, you know, the English English Speaking Dictionary, English. which is, right. uh, you know, uh, so, but still uh, the, I, I have, uh, so my Malasekra Dictionary has been taken by my son, of course, but I'm still using Oxford Concise Dictionary and uh, another Oxford little larger dictionary. So but, uh, um, for someone who is completely away from English, it's good to start with the Malala Sekra Singhala English. And then at some point, you've got to let it go and go to English English also. No? Yeah, yeah, that, that it is. Because then it's a kind of double, uh, your education gets double. Because when you move into an English English dictionary, if you don't understand that particular word, then you move into that word. And yes. from that word to another word, you know, it kind of leads. Never ending. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, yeah. Sir, sometimes your, your camera freezes, but your voice doesn't. So I'm going to get used to that. So your voice <laughs> carries on, but your feet, that, that's no problem because you're very clear what you're saying. Okay. okay. So when you, um, I just want to ask a question. Till you came to the Dharmayatanaya, you had yeah. no exposure to English. Mm, no. I mean, I, I, I just had, you know, like it was like uh, when I was like 11, 12 years, you know, so it, it was like very basic uh, uh, knowledge in English. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, that, so your teacher must have been quite good. I mean, quite terrific to have concentrated yeah. on grammar and still given you all this kind of um, ability. Yeah, actually, this uh, Mr. Jayasena had this own um, method. And then I still remember it was com combined method with even learning some things by heart. I remember we still, I mean, kind of, you know, learn by heart, like go, when, go on, cut, 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 like that, you know, all the words, you know, three tenses, we, we, and then uh, uh, how to use is, am, are, was, were, you know, I still remember, you know, those grammatical. So, you know, he had his own method of uh, teaching grammar. Uh, I, I think um, uh, that was that was I think the one of the very I, I would say very basic reasons you know how I could uh, pick up so the uh, I, I think because ultimately you know you can really look at a dictionary but that doesn't mean that you can understand unless you have really known the basic grammar so right. my my uh, experience is that you have to have a, a fair, I mean, like a level at least uh, in which you get um, B pass or C pass for O level. I think from that point onwards, with effort, you can you can develop your knowledge. Right. With, what, with, yeah. what made you apply to go abroad, sir? Was that, uh, did someone tell you to, or were you confident enough to say, now I can go abroad and study, which is completely in English? Um, of course, by that time, by the time I was completing my para, then you know, it's a degree, uh, you know, it was in the atmosphere, like, you know, you write to some foreign universities and uh, uh, you can get a scholarship and, you know, uh, so that thinking, that knowledge was already there. And then also I did the GRE and TOEFL to get ready um, for that, um, and uh, which I uh, secured sufficient, uh, you know, the, 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 the scope for that to apply and um, the competition as you can imagine was not very high uh, during that period so perhaps i was only one who was trying to uh, get into uh, study philosophy and buddhist philosophy in that all the others were like you know the uh, the people who compete in their first degree in science, chemistry, physics, and other things. So uh, we were only very few. Uh, of course, before me were uh, Professor Uyangwad, who had gone to the same place, East West Center for Political Science. And then uh, it was me. But we had many other friends who did uh, natural sciences, like chemistry, physics, um, you know, the zoology, subjects like that. From is humanities. Is that scholarship still uh, available, yeah. sir? Is there scholarship still yeah. being given to well, students? No, actually, East West Center Fellowship is um, still we have a society for like East West Center Participant Association, but uh, the 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 funding, I mean, the financial situation of the East West Center and also the goals of East West Center seem to have changed. So therefore, they do not anymore support long term students. That right now, their policy seems to be that they are supporting more short-term students, like, you know, students in the sense more like mid-career people to go to United States and maybe spend six months and get to know the system and things like yes. that. Yes. But the but the Fulbright scholarship is still available. It is still open. And yeah, exactly, yeah. sir, because I, rem I know that is advertised even now, but I have mm. not seen the East West Center for quite some time. And it was quite That's well known at some point. Right. Yeah, so, East West Center Fellowship was a very good one because East West Center is not the, is the University of Hawaii, but it is, uh, you know, it is placed in, situated uh, within the premises of university. So, you know, we were in the East West Center, but we had um, easy access to university and we could study in the university. So, you know, it's a very nice combination. And being part of East West Center, we had uh, what is called uh, Asia Pacific uh, uh, students, so students coming from Asian countries and uh, Pacific countries. So you know the islands and you know many countries. So it was exposure was again very good. Right. Were you still? Uh, were you ever apprehensive of this language, sir? 
because your story doesn't show any kind of fear. You mean in a negative sense? Uh, yes, like because very often when we speak about um, abuse in Sri Lanka, many people mm -hmm. say that they have been, you know, traumatized by the fact that they didn't know or they have been, you know, looked down <laughs> upon or whatever. But your story is strange. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. said you went into a library and you felt bad that you couldn't access the majority of books. Apart from that, could it be a right, right, life right. the way it has moved, in which you were in a way protected from the kind of, you know, the scorn and the insults that can come in sometimes by the fact that you might not know uh -huh. it? And did it, how did you feel right. abroad? Mm -hmm. Did you feel inferior in any way or it yeah. wasn't an issue? Well, actually, Madhubhajan is interesting because you feel uh, kind of apprehensive to speak in English uh, only in Sri Lanka. You go outside, um, yes. uh, particularly non-English speaking country, uh, you don't feel, you know, you don't get that feeling. You know, you are just, uh, now I remember because on my way I was passing countries like Japan and, you know, and uh, the, the, the uh, also when you meet uh, your neighboring country, Indian, Indian young scholars, you can see that they have their own English language and they are uh, almost proud about it, you know. So they are not really killing themselves. They, are actually, they, were actually, yeah. they, they made me feel ashamed for knowing English so well. They asked me very sympathetically. Like, really, you don't have a language of your own. So the table is well, I mean, the, 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 I, I have seen that. But then in my own personal thing, I think uh, you have to, uh, I, I wouldn't go to, I mean, I, I, I would see that's a little extreme. I mean, I would emphasize on knowing the grammatically correct English and you know, trying to pronounce it uh, to the, so that people, other people could understand. But at the same time, uh, you know, this idea that you have to speak perfect English or something, I, I, I never got it. Now, I remember one time I was passing through Japan and I went to this restaurant and then in the menu, it was pork noodle, right? Then I said to this lady who was serving, I said, pork noodle. Uh, she looked at me. Uh, then I, I, I knew that she did not understand. Then I pointed to the menu. Oh, pork noodle, pork noodle. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> So she put it in her own Japanese way, right? Exactly. So, yeah. you know, yeah. like that. So uh, I, 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 I never felt that way. But I always did believe that, you know, you need to write uh, as correct English as possible. You need to try to speak it uh, as correctly as possible. I still remember a long time ago when I... Uh, like that was in 1980s, I visited, uh, I was in Vancouver, Canada, and then I went to, uh, uh, we were visiting in, I think, Victoria, which had gardens or something. But anyhow, there I met Vendable, uh, the late Vendable, um, um, Balangoda uh, Anand Maitre Naikahamdru. And then uh, he was with some other groups of monks, he was there. And then we naturally got into uh, uh, talking English. And then after some time, you know, he commented that he said that, uh, uh, I, I'm sure it is exaggerated the comment, he said that, oh, best English I have heard from Sri Lanka. <laughs> Particularly, you know, uh, like that. You, you, did then, not, you, know, you did not find it difficult to write your thesis and your assignments? Those were, uh, when you no, were no, in actually, Hawaii, uh, at the standard? At, at the beginning, at the beginning, uh, it was not easy. At the beginning, it was not easy because, as you know, particularly all those people who go to United States, uh, the biggest difficulty for them is uh, even you, if even if you know your English uh, fairly well, uh, to listening and comprehension. Listening comprehension because you know the American pronunciation is uh, quite different, so it can be challenging. I remember still uh, I did not have enough. Uh, score for listening comprehension, but they thought that uh, uh, you can go that to, to American University and do that examination after three months. They give you three months because you know that they know they know that your problem is not, not knowing English, but simply because you know this accent is new. So the same thing happened to me after three months, they said that I don't need to take it. So uh, that was not, but then I remember one good, good thing is like, for example, now the, my first assignment, 
I had to, of course, we did not have computers. Computers were just coming in. So we could borrow a, a typewriter from the front desk of the place, uh, you know, East West Center. Uh, we just have to keep $1 as a security and you can borrow. And I still remember having not typed anything in Sri Lanka because, you know, usually in Sri Lanka, you will always have people to help, right? But then you go on there, you realize that you are just all by yourself. There are no, you know, the people to help you. So I still remember I managed to type this uh, um, paper with difficulty, with a um, lot of typing errors. Uh, so anyhow, I turned in this paper and then I received the paper back after a couple of days. I still remember very vividly, practically every line with big question mark. Aha, is that so? This must be a new discovery. And you know, all kinds of nasty comments. But Madhubhashini, that first encounter made the difference, you know, because, okay, I, I knew that this is where my typing is. This is where my, English is, because particularly when you go from Sri Lanka with the first class for your degree, you go with a little bit, you know, the couple of feet high, <laughs> but then <laughs> yes. this kind of experience will bring you back to the earth and then show that you are not even ordinary, you know, you can be even a little below the ordinary. But the interesting thing is, you know, like, again, with hard work within six months or something, uh, I knew how to play the game according to their rules. And not only I was playing the game, I was playing it well, actually, even better than some of those people. So, I mean, that you can do, but first humble enough to accept your situation and then proceed from there. So starting from typing, not only English, even English typing, English writing can be, you know, the, 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 the very challenging thing. But the I think with the proper attitude uh, and uh, hard work again, I don't think, uh, of course, I I, uh, I managed to do it. And then I you, not only managed, you, but- uh, when, you uh, set off to, yeah. when you set off to improve your academic uh, writing, sir, I'm guessing you must have read quite a lot of academic books as well. Uh, correct. And um, the, also, um, not only reading, uh, at this uh, juncture, you know, the academic writing is also imitating, looking at how the people who have done well, how they have done it. Exactly. You know, what are the techniques yes. and the methods they have. You know, you adopt those things, even the language, even the phrases, expressions. I think, uh, you know, I mean, the, so that is what uh, I did. So whenever I read the book, if there is a very interesting uh, way to say that the passage or phrase, I would even take down it in a piece of paper and, you know, and then try to make use of that. So, um, and then also, of course, uh, there was um, um, emphasis on the style. So later we were using Chicago Manual of Style and things like that. But even before that, um, uh, you know, there were other manuals we were using for, for, for style. So, um, so sir, I remember um, yeah. when I, I started my PhD, I, I had a friend, good friend who, I said my biggest fear is whether I can manage that academic style of writing. I see, I, I see. I, my natural thing is to be a creative writer. And I never, mm -hmm. never forget what he said. If he said, he said, if you do your reading the way you're meant to for a PhD, by the time the three years is done, your natural writing will be academic. Because you have been reading that kind of books right along for years. Correct, so that correct. Only through, as you say, it's imitation, which, which naturally comes into you because that's what you'll be reading uh, mm -hmm. for any PhD. So... Yeah. That, mm -hmm. So what I would like to take from what you said is for a learner, you if you read the kind of stuff that you're meant to write, you get naturally open, you know, you're, you're, yes. you imbue all those styles yeah. and words, because I think yeah. without reading and without being in that context, it will be difficult to produce that type of, the, whatever type of writing that you want to produce, even in creative no, writing. You yeah, definitely. Yes. 
I remember now when I started doing uh, my master's in Western philosophy, um, in fact, uh, I did not have, I mean, I had read like uh, Burton Russell's history of Western philosophy in Sri Lanka, but that was uh, uh, when I first read it, I thought it's really great. Of course, it's a great book, but that's a very beginning book. But then, then only when I went there, I started realizing that I walked into this uh, 600 level graduate course and I, my, I felt that, you know, I was really, you know, uh, uh, you know, disoriented. But then I realized that I need to do a lot of background reading in Western philosophy. Again, what I did was, uh, Madhubhashini, I bought as you know, there are secondhand bookstores in particularly in the United States around universities. I, I still have my copies of complete works of Plato, complete works of Aristotle, and then Descartes. I bought all these philosophers because I knew that I had to have these, at least the fundamental books. So on the one hand, I was reading Buddhist philosophy. I was reading Western philosophy. And the other interesting thing is I never stopped reading newspapers and fiction. That is where my general, I mean, language skill came because, because I, I'm really avid reader of, you know, the news. Even now I watch news uh, if I have time, but then newspaper. So where you get day-to-day -day English. And also um, the, 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 particularly the fiction. So I, I, I uh, now of course for the last uh, 20, 30 years didn't have time to read fiction very much. <laughs> And, uh, but uh, so those two things, reading the newspapers and uh, reading fiction alone with these things, I think that kept me with uh, uh, kind of, not, so the, my English was not only my philosophy or Buddhist philosophy. I could communicate, you know, with the day-to-day, -day, you know, the English and, you know, the day-to-day -day problems we are, economic or social problems and the political things we were discussing. That is actually, sir, one of the first things we tell our students, please, in, in, a, in a university, the, the hostels get the English paper. We say, please read it. I mean, it's a lot of political complications there, sir. If, you, if the friends see someone trying to read the English papers, I'm sure there'll be a card deck gun. Okay, I'm sure there will be many. Exactly. But, exactly. you know, that, that's one of the advices we give. So before I Ask finish you. this uh, interview, I want to ask you, now as an academic, as a teacher, how much do you do to make your own students proficient in English. For example, when they come in, the majority I'm guessing might not know English. What are the right. things you have put in place? What advice do you give them to? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, to uh, yeah, Madhu Bhajan, that's a very, very, uh, very, very important question, actually. Now, I being conscious of this, and particularly even now, uh, now at the very beginning of your introductory remarks, you. Uh, you refer to this whole issue of, you know, why do you have to know English when you study Buddhism? I mean, it's in Pali, Sanskrit, and Sinhala enough. You know, that, that, that attitude uh, still may be prevalent among some people. But interestingly, Buddhist studies today is not merely a local subject. It's really an international subject. As you know, Buddhist studies started becoming international almost from 1880s uh, when Rhys Davids came to Sri Lanka and went back with Pali books and started translating them into English. So it is very interesting to see that it took about middle of the 20th century and it took about uh, up to about um, 1980s when we completely uh, published and printed Tripitaka in single letters in our country. But you know, that happened in England by the time 1920s, they had almost translated everything uh, into English. Not only that, they had published all the Tripitaka works in uh, Roman characters. So in that sense, you could see that um, you, have to, uh, you have to learn English. Of course, I should not say only English, but if you take today, uh, the Japan is considered to be one of the biggest uh, uh, producers of Buddhist academic work. Uh, some according to some estimates, they, they publish about eight to 900 academic papers per year in Japanese language. See, this is concerning, uh, this concerning is, Buddhism. 
yeah, concerning Buddhism. And of course, we have um, German and also French. Now, as a part of my degree, comparative philosophy, uh, they asked me to uh, pass examinations in Pali, Sanskrit, French, and German. And then uh, take all, four, all four all languages, sir. Yes, all four languages, but uh, because <laughs> I know, but because I already had my uh, Pali and Sanskrit, they accepted my uh, uh, knowledge to be sufficient. So they exempted me from those two things. But then I had to um, take French and uh, German languages. French, I had studied in Sri Lanka by that time and Alliance Ponsius up to diploma. So I was fairly okay with that. But then German, I had never studied anything. But you wouldn't believe after three semesters of German, with the help of dictionary, I was translating Kant, some passages. Kant is considered to be so difficult even Germans, they say, read the English translation first. <laughs> uh, a critique of pure reason. In German, it is critique der Rhein and Vernuft. So they say that uh, before reading the German original, they read Smith's English translation. But I, I was translating uh, the, the some parts of uh, uh, Kant's work and also Wittgenstein, another very difficult uh, German writer. So it means that, uh, again, I'm sorry, today I almost forgot everything in German because I don't use little bit, I still remember French, but uh, I had to pass my examinations. So before my PhD, I had to complete those two examinations. So uh, if, I, if I get my maths uh, correct, sir, you know six languages? Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> Kind of thing, uh, right? Not Parameshwar active, that's the problem. Oh, whatever. <laughs> but, but six, because yeah. Sinhala yeah. English, obviously, you are very good at both of those. And you knew Pali, Sanskrit, and French and German. That's six. And also, I studied learning Tamil after I came to Sri Lanka. Uh, because I thought that uh, those days I was living in Panadura, coming by bus to uh, uh, postgraduate institute, which was in uh, Bambalapitiya. I remember one time dozing off in the bus and, you know, I still was not sure whether I was in Sri Lanka or America, but then I heard this language being spoken and not under, myself understanding. Then suddenly I realized that I'm in Sri Lanka and then I'm passing well about that. Then I feel a little bit bad, you know, there's a language in this country which I don't understand. So I went into BMICH and got in, enrolled. Again, I completed two parts. I still can read and, I mean, but then, you know, with work accumulating, I could not really do after that. So, but you're, still, I, I, you're still better than the majority of us, sir, <laughs> who have not, I mean, it, it, it's sad that we actually live alongside a community whose language we uh, don't speak. That, that's something that is really difficult to understand. I no, myself, I'm, I'm just bilingual. I don't know Tamil. You, right. you, you feel kind of scary because when someone speaks a third language which you don't understand. You should, you know? exactly. The, that's yeah. exactly the point. So, and, uh, the, the point was that uh, not only English, you have to, I mean, for Buddhist studies, uh, Japanese, German, French, and, you know, many other languages are important. But being in Sri Lanka with the kind of facilities we have, with the kind of history we have, I think English is the best choice we have. Right. I mean, so, so your so question what, was... What process have you put in place for your students to have, act? do they have your desire to learn? I mean, you obviously full of agency, you wanted to learn it, but what is the situation now when they come into your department? I mean, well, you actually, the, the, the situation of the university students, majority of the students who come to university are, uh, as far as English is concerned, uh, pathetic maybe because to that extent you know some people even cannot write their name Madhubashini, as you know i mean in the university yeah. system so you know it is very very but now you know teaching buddhist philosophy particularly particularly those students who do it for their uh, honors degree uh, i myself personally and we uh, you know generally we used to encourage them very much and then also give the english terms and then, uh, so that way uh, we were we were teaching in Singhala, but then we were giving English terms and you know encouraging them to so asking them sometimes even reading passages from the English text. You know those those were the things. And then another and very interesting. You, but thing. do you see the struggle that you did 
replicated, sir? Or is this something no. that is not? Because I have not, honestly, I haven't seen much no. of it. No, no, you are right. I think I'm there with you because uh, no, because these people think that uh, they simply don't want to, you know, they make that effort. I, I mean, the story I told right now, I have to tell my, I mean, I have told my student many times, you know, I mean, just do it for six months regularly, you know, without being lazy. But the fact of the matter is they don't do it. They think that, you know, it, it, it has to come from, you know, somewhere. I mean, it doesn't come like that because unless you really do it, it doesn't come to you. It, it so, seems uh, as if they, some, they expect a magic wand to be. Um, <laughs> be right. I, I do because I do many things like we have a Basha body project where we try to help. But mm -hmm. I realize that many have not realized that they themselves have to work. Exactly. No amount of teaching is going to help them unless they struggle with it, they produce it. So I'm very glad, sir, of the story that you told here, because that is, I, I have a series of uh, people coming in and talking about how they learned the language and every <laughs> single story, thing in common, they have access to library at some point, right? <laughs> and either the young people said, we access it through the computer, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. the medium, so long as you access yourself to things written in English. And also that they worked. It mm. was an effort that that combined their heart, soul, and body. They had right. to actually right. learn it. So I, I, I like and And then you showed also, if you do that, you can get PhDs written in English. Exactly, so, exactly. You know, and, and that's such a heartening thing to say. So, uh, Professor Asanga Tilakaratna, thank you very much. Because, you know, you're showing it's possible. How is it possible? And to not consider it some magic thing <clears throat> and believe in things like you learn English. In th yes, you can probably learn how to say hello, how are you? Yeah, exactly. But yeah. That is, if you want to be an educated person, you need to get deeper. That comes through reading, through struggle. It doesn't necessarily have to be painful. It can. Right, right, but right. you can enjoy the process also. So thank you very much, sir, for this. And we will also talk in Singhala. So that, okay. you know, there will be people who listen to you and people like you show the ladder. A lot of great, like who I, I consider great people, they will show how they got up there because mm -hmm. some hide the ladder. They access it. They, <laughs> you know, go anyway up there from the beginning. But the, really, the great people show how they climbed it. So it's thank you for showing that today. Thank you very, thank you very <laughs> yes. much. Okay. And I will see you again with the single interview, sir. Okay, all right. Thank you very okay. much, sir. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>